We're back with Breitbart Second Amendment writer, Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins. So you've been writing about campus carry as well. What's, what's the latest going on there? Well, the, the very latest is Georgia passing it today. The Senate passed it. Uh, it was passed in the House on March 6th. The Senate Judiciary Committee made some slight changes, so it goes back to the House. Now, I've got a piece that may already be up, but it's getting ready to come up. What's important to understand if you're in Georgia, the House only has two days, mm -hmm. literally. They have until midnight Thursday. That's it. So you need to call your reps, your state reps. Be polite, but in a polite way, say, hey, support this yeah. or we're going to vote you out. Don't leave any doubt that you're going to vote them out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I Man, I, I have the concept of campus carry. I don't understand how that be so far gone to some people. Um, I, I mean, I remember one of my me and my mentors, we got into a back and forth about it. Um, and he had a kind of antiqu antiquated perspective about it. Um, and I'm like, well, I was just in college, so I think I think I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a better position <laughs> to kind of, kind of speak on campus carry. But, and, the way well, and, and I, I pointed out they they found a mom in Ohio when Ohio passed it, uh -huh. and the mom had moved to Ohio from Connecticut, and she she said I I don't see any justification for guns around schools. She talked about how Sandy Hook had just devastated her, and I'm sitting here going. Where's the disconnect? The reason yeah. Sandy Hook happened is there were no, no guns, guns in school. In school. The and teacher and administration had to sacrifice their bodies to protect those kids, their lives, not just their bodies. I mean, what? Like I'm like you. Where's the disconnect here? I mean, I don't get it. I, it, it, I think it may be willful because, I mean, even if you really think about it, you know, they, they, they say things like we, we don't need to have guns around school as if this guy, I almost said his name because I, I, I make a point not to say their names. Um, he, he didn't walk into school carrying his yeah. firearm because open uh, campus carry was allowed. You know, right. he was breaking every law you could possibly imagine when he did what he did. And so the right. idea that we're going to be able to prevent that or stop that by creating more laws is, like you said, it's just it, there's a disconnect there that, that, that kind of almost screams up until the point of, of kind of a mental disability in some sense. Right. Because... That, that, that's a complete runaway from logic that I honestly can't wrap my head around after a certain point. I agree with you. My, I'm trying to make form the habit. I didn't, I didn't start trying until about a year and a half ago, but I don't mention their names anymore either. Now, I'll refer to them as animals. Gotcha. And I caught yeah. the guy that yeah. attacked Sandy Hook. That's all he was, an animal. Yeah. I, I only regret that he was able to shoot himself, that law enforcement didn't just get to cut him in half. I regret that. But, you know, when you put people... A crowd of people anywhere, and you let let it be known that there there are no guns for defense. You invite these people yeah. because these kind of animals prey on the weak, and you can't be weaker than being unarmed in today's society. You know what's so sick about the way the other side kind of approaches, and, and, and I mean the extreme anti-gunners will approach what you just said about that particular animal. When take a page out of your book, is they'll look at you and look at you as being evil. Like why would you wish that oh, yeah. upon? someone else. And I'm like, well, that's because you all spend so much time trying to demonize us and, 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 and impart a level of apathy with respect to the kids that died in that school that you can't understand the level of anger we also feel as a right. result of putting people in a position where they don't have the means to defend themselves from said animal. And right. So, You're exactly right. Mm -mm. You're giving voice to something that people don't give voice to a lot. And I appreciate what you're saying. And I do feel that. I feel uh, what a buddy of mine calls righteous indignation. Yeah. And he says, we can never get rid of that. And, he, and, you know, the left wants to push that down. They want to teach us to be almost devoid of emotion, emotion. when it's the right time to be yeah. emotional. We should be indignant. We should hate the people that carry out acts, whether it's Orlando Pulse, San Bernardino, Sandy Hook, Tech, uh, Virginia Tech, yeah. wherever it is. We should hate those people for what they did. That's my opinion. And I do. And, and, but more than that, I hate the loss that people suffered yeah. and they suffered it because of policies that kept them unarmed. That's just not American. I'm sorry. It's just not. And I don't, I don't see how people can't see that. I mean, I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to say people. I'm going to say the people on the other side advocating against, uh, advocating against the second amendment in that sense, because right. I, I think on the, uh, look, you know what, initially on the surface, I get it. If you don't follow the gun debate, if you're not into firearms, and you hear someone's advocate, people have always asked me, well, Collins, you're always talking about how bad this law is, how bad that law is, and, and so forth and so on, why this won't work. Tell us what will work. I was, right. like, I was like, get rid of gun-free zones. And, right. and I was like, that's appalling. What, that, 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 just why would you do that? 
after I've broken it down to you and showed you the logic behind it, if you then don't understand it, then that's just willful ignorance on your part at that at, at yep. that point. Because there's, no, there's nothing else I can tell you or show you to get you to understand that any further. What we're doing right now is not working. It's not. Right. <laughs> it's just not. And it's proven. It's not just the schools. It's at movie theaters. Yep. See, do you ever notice? You ever notice when they keep going back to Aurora? It's always one of their go-to examples. They never mention it was a gun-free zone. They don't do the thing about the Lafayette Theater where Amy Schumer's movie was showing. <laughs> she launched her whole gun control movement on that theater. Wants more gun control, doesn't want to back up and go, wait, what is the one common thread in all these shootings? Oh, the gun-free zone. And so, you know. But to your earlier question, I want to say with Campus Carry, besides Georgia considering it now, Arkansas. Arkansas on March 22nd, the governor signed that. I love to see that because that tells me there's another state where people don't have to be victims. It puts flesh and blood on what you and I are talking to. I mean, let's talk about Let's just be real. I went to I went to a school that was in a pretty shitty area um, when I was in college. Um, I remember walking back from the libraries late at libraries <laughs> from the library late at night. Um, I remember having to essentially understand that if something were to happen, my only recourse or options were to run, fight, or push that call button. That's going to take me another fifteen minutes, which brings me back to either running or fighting. And right. at that point, you know, maybe I'm in a better position to deal with something like that. But what, but what about but what about people who are, who are more vulnerable, who are also at the same library going home at the exact same time? Right. And so and there were plenty of times where I've encountered people who are a little bit suspect, who made me kind of question or gave me pause. And and, you know, maybe they didn't really get that much get that aggressive towards me because they, they kind of looked at me as being able to handle myself a little bit better than someone else or didn't see me as an overt victim. But at the same time, to ignore that fact and to act like a lot of these schools are placed in areas that aren't the greatest, that's kind of common in a lot of universities. It's, um, right. So from that standpoint, for to just completely rule out the idea of allowing grown-ups, we're not talking about high school kids, we're talking about adults here and deny them the ability to carry a gun in a place that they live. Right. That, that, that to me, is it's insane. Right. And I wrote a piece. I can't remember the law professor's name. I believe she's at the University of Miami, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cloak that by saying I believe. I could be wrong. Yeah. But when they were pushing Campus Carry in Florida last year, she came out, this is a paraphrase, but she said that women can't handle a firearm. That's a paraphrase. That if they have one with them, their attacker will just take it away and use it against them. If you will go to those that degree to argue against firearms, I don't even talk to you. There's nothing to yeah. talk about. If you will go, C.S. Lewis used to talk about the man who would see through things. Instead of recognizing them, he kept seeing through them, seeing through them to see what was behind them. He said at the end of the day, all that man sees is nothing. He, he refuses to listen to the truth. Yeah. And that's how so many of these people are. You talked about willful ignorance a while ago. They're, they're willfully or woefully supporting gun control. They're blind to facts. They're immune to facts. And a lot of that is on purpose. Some of these people don't even deserve to have discussions. They don't even deserve to be talked to. I know you're in there and I'm in there for the people who are still listening going, you know what? I'm thinking about getting a concealed carry permit. For those kind of people, you need to understand the difference in life and death might be you having a gun and Mm -hmm. knowing how to use it. Don't be swayed by these leftist loons. Now, it doesn't. It does nothing for you because at the end of the day, you virtue virtue signaling off the idea of oh, I don't carry a gun because guns are bad. Yeah, right. When you find yourself in a position where you need one, what has that done for you? Right. Exactly. Right? Um, whereas I, on the other hand, I can go about my life. I may never have to use a gun that's on my hip right now, but in the event that I have to, it's there. And at that point, I'm going to be glad I didn't virtue signal. Right. I'm with you. Yeah, you know that old cliche, my daddy used to say it all the time. You could see him right here over my left shoulder on the wall, but he used to always say, son, it's better to have that gun and never use it than, or never need it than need it and not have yeah, it. Absolutely. And, uh, and when, when I was little, I used to think, that's the corniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and as you grow up, you go, you know what? That almost sucks it all up. Yeah. And I know that's not his saying. That's an yeah. old saying, but I, I love that. I try to keep it in mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it was another awesome, invigorating conversation with you as always. Much appreciated. So I look forward to having you back on the show sometime soon. Oh, thank you. Great to be with you as always. Have a great day. Absolutely, man. Take care. Thank you for joining us today on CN Live. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. here on NRA TV, and I hope you will too.